There are a few things you should know before insulating a building, because otherwise this can lead to unintended consequences that may harm more than just your energy bill. From moisture problems to compromised air quality, the devil is in the details, and those details can turn your cozy home into a damp, chilly, and unhealthy environment. My name is Anton Dobrevsky, I'm a passive house trainer, and I've taught hundreds of professionals how to design energy efficient and comfortable buildings. And insulation is one of the main pillars of making a sustainable building. It can be a game changer for both your wallet and the planet, resulting in reduced heat losses and lower heating bills. And when done right, insulation can turn an old drafty house into a bastion of energy efficiency. But here's the catch. It's not as simple as slapping on a layer of insulation material. Get it wrong and you could be facing dozens of issues you didn't sign up for, which can result in a lot of additional costs and even destroy your health. Therefore, in this video, we're going to dissect these challenges, revealing why a well-intentioned move to insulate a building could backfire if you're not careful. So before you pick up that foam or fiberglass, make sure you watch this because it might just save you from making a costly mistake. It might seem counterintuitive, but sometimes insulation isn't just about keeping the cold out, it's also about managing the warmth within because better insulation means a warmer environment, and that means more moisture. That's right, the air in a well-insulated home can hold more moisture. And this isn't inherently a bad thing, unless that moisture has nowhere to go. And on top of that, we also introduced new windows into the mix, like new airtight windows that do an excellent job at insulating. But there's a catch. These windows keep the moisture in as much as they keep the cold out. So without adequate ventilation, you're essentially sealing in all that moisture, turning your home into a terrarium. And the first problem with this is when that warm, moist air meets a cold surface. It's like a cold glass of water on a hot day, namely condensation forms. These cold spots are called thermal bridges. To put it simply, thermal bridges are like the chinks in a knight's armor, places where the protective layer is compromised, allowing the enemy, in this case the heat, to escape. They're the sections of the building envelope that due to less or ineffective insulation become pathways for the heat to leak out. These could be at the junctions where different building elements meet, like at the corner of a window frame or where a balcony projects from a wall. And while these might seem like minor issues, they can have major impact on your home's overall energy efficiency. Think of it this way. You're wearing a thick, fluffy winter coat to keep warm. It's snug and cozy until you realize you've left the zipper undone. Suddenly, that coat isn't keeping you warm at all, and that's the essence of a thermal breach, a path of less resistance for heat to escape. But what does this look like in real terms? Inside your home, these thermal bridges become cold spots, and as we've already established, where there's cold, there's condensation. Remember, Warm air can carry more moisture, but as soon as it hits the cold surface, it releases this moisture. And this is the same principle that makes your bathroom mirror fog up after a hot shower. And that's the same reason why single glazed windows would fog up in winter, not only because the air inside is too humid, but because the windows themselves are too cold, prompting condensation. And yes, that's a cat licking the window and believe me, she is enjoying it. Now, apply that principle to your whole house. After insulating, the interior moisture is no longer spread evenly. It's attracted to these cold spots, these thermal bridges, and that's what leads to condensation. But wait, there's more. These cold spots don't just attract moisture, they create the ideal environment for mold growth. And mold is not just ugly, it's harmful. It can lead to respiratory issues, allergies, and overall, it's something you want to avoid at all costs. And thermal bridges are not the only problem. The second significant issue that arises when insulating homes is the lack of proper ventilation. And that's where things get a bit, well, steamy. You see, when we talk about modernizing our homes with insulation and new windows, we often overlook a critical component, namely airflow. We've already explained that a well-insulated home holds more moisture. That's a good thing if we're talking about cozy, warm air, but where does all that moisture go? If your home is buttoned up, tight as a drum, with nowhere for the dam to escape, you've got a problem. And that problem is again condensation and mold growth. Think of it like this. You're in a submarine. It's watertight, airtight and efficient. But without systems to manage the air quality and moisture, 
things would quickly get uncomfortable, right? Well, the same goes for your newly insulated home. Without adequate ventilation, that moisture we produce every day from breathing, showering, cooking has no exit strategy. It's trapped inside with us. And we cannot stop producing moisture, right? We cannot stop breathing or cooking just to produce less moisture. Dude, are you trying to kill me? So we have to somehow manage the moisture. Well, you might think a dehumidifier could be the simple solution. However, it's only part of the answer. Sure, it can remove moisture, but it doesn't solve the problem of stagnant air. Fresh air exchange is vital. Not only does it reduce moisture levels, but it also removes indoor pollutants and provides oxygen. It's about creating a living, breathing home that cycles air as naturally as we cycle our breath. Unfortunately, the impact of insufficient ventilation isn't always immediately obvious. Over time, the signs become impossible to ignore. Mold starts creeping up walls, windows are wet with condensation, and the air feels stale. And then the health issues may start. Mold spores can lead to respiratory problems, allergens build up, and before you know it, your home isn't just uncomfortable, it's also very unhealthy. So whether it's through mechanical ventilation with heat recovery systems, which efficiently exchange indoor and outdoor air without losing heat, or through carefully planned natural ventilation, the goal is clear. Keep the air moving, keep it fresh and keep it healthy. This is why ventilation should be a key part of any insulation strategy. Neglect one and the other falters. But when you get them both right, you create not just a more energy efficient space, but a healthier, more comfortable home. And be careful. There are many different ways in which you can ventilate your home. And if you don't use the right ventilation strategy, many things can go wrong from paying a lot for energy bills to creating an unhealthy and uncomfortable environment. So if you want to learn how the ventilation system should be designed to avoid these issues, make sure to check out this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.